Hello, this is Greg Allison with Galactic Gregs coming to you on the 9th of December 2020 with breaking news. Spaceship uh, SM9 took off and flew, did the belly flop, came back in and crashed on the pad today. And uh, it's a major flight development. I'm going to share a little video. I'm going to talk to it in a little bit. Major flight development. So this is breaking news. Um, there'll be more analysis to come later once we get some more feedback, but uh, preliminarily, uh, looking at the ascent, uh, looks like they had some engine trouble um, and it might have had too much fuel coming back. So let's kind of uh, find some of this video here and I'll show you uh, what we're seeing. Ding, 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 ding. Bam. Let's do this. Bing. And this is the, uh, hang on, let me show this right behind me here. Yikes. Right to Santa Claus. Sorry about that, Santa. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here we go. This is the right at liftoff. And you can see it was, uh, well, we're using the central standard time here, 445, because it's in Texas. Well, that's East Texas. They're, they're getting close to being, you know, El Paso has uh, mountain time. Here we go. Had a really good liftoff. She flew really well at first. As you can see, the cameras are kind of uh, uh, jerky. It's kind of hard to follow this, and maybe the video is a little jerky too. There it goes. She made a quick ascent. And I'm, I'm not going to play the entire thing, and we're going to skip through it. This is somebody else's video feed. I'm just talking through it. You can see she was flying really smooth at first. At first, just fine, really smooth. And it looked like one, you could see fire in the engine compartment. And then you started seeing debris. You can see right here, that's the frost on the uh, outside, probably from the uh, cryogenic propellant, oxygen, I suppose. So it's just going up pretty good at first. And all that jerkiness is just a camera following it, trying to track it. And where do we see the, the, the fire at first? Well, I want to see a little fire in the engine compartment. Let me skip it up for a little bit. There we go. There we go. You see that? Boom. She had a problem, engine out. One rafter out, and but she flew too. She had a good engine out capability for her. Now you still see some fire here, look at that. You see that fire, like the smoke trail right there. She's having a problem, she's struggling. Yes, there should not, plume should not be looking like that. It should be smooth like it was at first. She looked at her to the side. Maybe something was venting. It looks like you had a fire on the side, maybe a feed line issue. I don't know. I don't know how the feed lines, I don't know how the thing was plumbed but she's definitely having an issue, but she's continued to stay on trajectory. She's continuing to climb. And yeah, you know, you can see the fire here on the side. See that right there, boom, boom, boom. Now, the important thing here is, you know, you want, you, they're wanting to bring this thing back in. So you don't want to bring back in a fuel vehicle. You want to burn off as much of this fuel as you possibly can. Yeah, I was listening to audio of these guys. They were going, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> but let's, let's skip this forward a little bit. And there was another engine went out on it. Uh, and I don't know, here we are. She's struggling here. She's on, I think she may be on one engine here. You can see the smoke probably coming out of the other. She's sliding uh, this way. She's translating because she's got a thrust asymmetry. I don't think that was planned, um, but they got to burn the fuel off. They need to burn as much fuel off as they can before they bring it back. So they did the right thing in that regard. Bam. So she is translating, sliding like it's sure. Yeah, the thrust is off. In one engine, looks like it's smoking. Uh, they rigged it. Uh, you can see fire. You can see a little fire right here. You see that? What is that? And the smoke community was be coming from there, but there was one rocket engine firing really well. One rafter is firing really well, at least. At least one rafter at this point. Now there's two engines. Uh, it may be that they turned one off. I don't know what their flight profile was. I don't know what their intent was. Maybe they planned to turn one off. Here, I think they're turning all their engines off. Maybe, or is this where the other one goes out? Oh, no. They're still burning a Raptor. They still got one burning, and they got a lot of smoke here. So, see, that's a problem engine. They'll probably be venting fuel through that engine. Uh oh, here we go. Everything's turned off. Now they're coming back. And at first it looks a little uncontrolled, but then it gets arrow control real quickly. It kind of does a drop and then the belly flop. <laughs> drop and belly flop. Look at, yeah, 
but you want to be on board that going are we going to pull up are we going to pull up please pull up please pull up <laughs> uh, i think we're pulling up <laughs> yeah yeah we seem to be pulling up who are we now you would not have wanted to have been riding on this bird if you was riding on this bird you would be uh, in a bit of hurt all right i don't want to play all these different views here this is not this is somebody else's video and so we don't want to play all that per se so we're going to skip forward and my oh shoot what's happening here sometimes you get to skip but oops skip too much that's the problem skipping on this thing it's not showing me the frame for frame when i'm skipping all right skip play here we go she's looking good coming in now she really is she's looking good and it manages to do a good belly flop and it flies back to the pad and reignites the engines it does what it's supposed to do on return which was amazing that was an amazing part of the flight that they could do the belly flop and bring it back especially after having engine trouble look at this it's got two raptors firing one i'm struggling though see that one i'm struggling that's the problem boom crash they tried to come in on two two uh two raptors and it just wasn't enough there was not enough thrust came in too hot had too much fuel they did burn a lot off good thing they burned a lot of it off look at this again they let two raptors and she's got three i get maybe they preferred to let all three see but even one of them one of them struggled right there bam they have two lit but only one brought her down and she just couldn't stop well she did stop <laughs> Just a little faster than they wanted to. And there you go. SN8 is no more. Except for rubble on the pad. And the interesting thing is there's still some good pieces of it sitting there on the pad. You can see the nose cone right there. Smoking, smoldering. All right. And that is SN8. There's Star Hopper. <laughs> and there's SN8. Well, it was a very ambitious uh, flight. Today, let me stop the share and we'll talk about it for a minute. Bam. <laughs> Very ambitious flight today. It was quite an accomplishment that they managed to launch it, fly it, and they even with all the engine problems, they brought her back home to the pad. But they had engine problems. They just couldn't land it right. It came in hot, too hot, too much fuel. It crashed and burned. That's what rockets can do. <laughs> You know, there's, I've told you about Allison's Laws of Rockets before in this ch uh, channel. I devised them back when I was building hybrid rockets, launched some hybrid balloons over 20 years ago, starting in the 1990s, early 90s. Rockets go boom. Rockets have always gone boom. And rockets always will go boom. Our job is making them go boom a whole lot less often if we can. <laughs> and well, this is development flight. What I really hope is they had really good development flight instrumentation on board to tell what was going on with the engines. If they had really good flight uh, development instrumentation and hopefully good video, then hopefully they'll be able to do the analysis to figure out what went wrong with that first engine, what was going on with the second Raptor. They did turn it off, it looked like. They tried to reignite it. It did not reignite properly, it seems. That's two engines they had problems with, two out of three. That's not good. You know, they had problems with uh, an engine earlier on uh, a few days ago and then they had they replaced uh, an engine or did something they had a problem on the pad i wasn't following this uh, particular uh mission that closely uh but you know i can see what's happened here you could see debris coming out when that first engine was burning then the smoke so they were ha definitely having uh, problems and you can see the plume coming off the side of the rocket so uh she was definitely having a lot of issues but not enough that they lost aero control they maintained aero control coming back even after that translation and all the stuff that went wrong you know it didn't follow the, the trajectory they meant for it to so it was able to compensate for that coming back that was an amazing belly flop that's what i was worried about could they do the belly flop now there'd be a question will they be able to do the belly flop at higher velocities in the future i'm assuming they're probably going to be able to handle that but it is a developmental program and you know, you're going to get crashes and burns. That's a good thing that Elon Musk has the money and the patience to do this because a lot of programs are so successful. And if they had an end like this, it'd be the end of the program. You know, if you've got a governmental program, NASA, NASA worries quite a bit about an ending like that. 
because it'd pretty much be finished with a project because it's all political and politicians fund everything. But Elon's funding this. So, uh, and really and truly, this is how you learn stuff. In the old days of rocketry, we had that kind of patience and maybe we're, we're getting it back, even on the government side. But um, and we blew up a lot in the earlier days, but we, we had uh, more drive to do it back then because we had to compete with the rescues to get to space and the moon. And we had uh, the Cold War going on a lot of other impetus to, to push the space program on the governmental side in the early days. And now that the, the program is very risk adverse, fortunately, Elon's not because the only way you can really do innovative things is to break things, <laughs> blow some things up, burn things. That's how you learn lessons. And so there's some really good valuable lessons in this mission, in this flight. Uh, hopefully they have the data to know what went wrong. If they don't, hopefully they'll list a minute in the future. <laughs> You really want robust developmental flight instrumentation. A lot of times programs, they'll cut that out to save money. You don't want to do that, not in the development flight, because you're going to lose so much valuable data if you do. So I hope they had it. Uh, they had engine out capability going up fairly well for one engine out, two engines out. No, it's struggling. It looked to me like she was really struggling at that point. But that second engine relit for a little bit. <laughs> So I don't know what the flight protocols were, how they were handling. It would have been interesting to have been in their mission control. I'm sure they had a very interesting few moments there. <laughs> it was a quick flight. Um, so I, I'd say congratulations, SpaceX. You, you did an excellent job proving that you could launch it and do that belly flop and bring it back like that. Yeah, you crashed it and it blew up. But it was uh, a very uh, interesting developmental flight. You learned a lot. And hopefully you'll be able to correct whatever problems you got and get this program on track. I'm hopeful now, but you just got to work out the problems. What's going on with those rafters, the engines. It looks like you still got some development there, some lessons learned. Hopefully you can learn them well enough to make this a reliable vehicle and make this a reliable system. Because if you're going to be flying the kind of missions and number of missions and doing the turnarounds to keep flying this thing, as many times as you say, you, your reliability has got to go way up above anything we've ever seen for rockets before. Not saying you can't do it. You can, I hope. <laughs> but there's still a, a good distance to go. I hope uh, Elon, I know he's got the patience because he's got the drive. He really wants to go to a planet the color of my shirt here. <laughs> and that's why I'm wearing this shirt. <laughs> this is my Mars shirt. <laughs> I'm about to have to start wearing red shirts because I am Santa Claus, as you might know. <laughs> Space Santa. See? On a rocket. <laughs> <laughs> this was given to me by a lady who's got a channel called Blue Bottle Bunny Farm. Yes, anyway, so uh, I get some interesting gifts from time to time. Anyway, <laughs> so my friends, subscribe to my channel, bang up that notification bell, and click off because I will bring you more stuff on this and, and other future developments. And I still got a lot of work to do on this Venus project. Yeah, I've got concepts. How do you? Yes, you can mine Venus. Be, oh, you can't mine Venus. Oh, just wait. Well, you can't lift off a rocket like one of those on Venus. Oh, just wait. <laughs> I got all this stuff covered. You got more to see. You're going to want to see that. And I'll be reporting on ISS. Yeah, ISS just had its 40th birthday. I've done a lot of work on the International Space Station. I've done. A, I've been involved with a lot of the old Apollo guys. Uh, I'm a little bit behind on making videos and some of that stuff. I will try to catch up some of these things. So bear with me. More's coming. And I'll just say at this point, thank you for watching.